Hi, I'm Lena and welcome to my series Reading Like a Booktuber, where I read favorite books or books that I've bought on the recommendation of a specific booktuber. I've done this in the past with some of my booktube friends, but it's time to branch out and read like more booktubers. Hi, I'm Lena, welcome, welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode 3 of Reading Like a Booktuber. Today I'm going to read like Ashley from A Frolic True Fiction. I'm doing this right now because most of my gothic spooky mythology retelling recommendations I get from Ashley and to me it's still the spooky season so I thought I could read Ashley's recommendations right now. A lot of books I kind of want to own but I might read them first and see if I like them because some of these books are a bit outside of my comfort zone which is the whole reason I'm doing this. Episode 1 was Books and Lala, episode 2 was Jen Campbell and I discovered a lot of new authors and I will be discovering a lot of new authors today. One author I've been wanting to try a long time and this one was a very early recommendation from Ashley back in 2020 I think or maybe even earlier and that is Wait by Jeanette Winterson. This is a Greek myth retelling. Jeanette Winterson is an author that has always fascinated me so this seems like a beautiful way to start a book that is quite a recent recommendation from Ashley but that is one that I think she is the first person I saw talk about this book and then it blew up and that is Babel by R.F. Kuang. I think this is a magical realism, dark academia kind of book. I've heard a lot of things about it. I don't know if I will love it. Seeing Ashley love it so much kind of gave me good hope. I think in the last year Ashley has talked so much about fantasy romance. I've dipped my toe into it a little bit but one that she recommended I think two years ago or a year ago just fascinated me so much because it's kind of her Beauty and the Beast retelling and that is Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm. Um, I'll be reading this on my Kindle and I'm really excited for it. Two very dark and creepy books. One is Slufu by Brom, which I had never heard of until I heard Ashley talk about it. And the illustrations look really, really beautiful. I do have a Kindle edition, but I think I will probably read it on my computer or on my phone so I can see the illustrations in color and maybe... If I really love it, I will get an addition for the illustrations. And then A Dowry of Blood is another one which is also kind of a retelling from Dracula, but from Dracula's Bride, I think. And it sounds so fascinating and so bloody. And then I wanted to pick one more book. So these were all the recommendations I had already on my TBR because Ashley talked about it. And then I went through her videos and thought like, okay, if I want to read a sixth book, which one is it going to be? And then I did see some more um, indie books, but I couldn't get my hands on them. So I'm going to go for a book that I saw my friends read as well, or that my friends have on their TBR. So I want to give this a go, even though I don't know if I will love it because it's YA and I don't usually love YA. I'm either middle grade or adult. But since Ashley loves it so much and I trust her, I'm going to give House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland a go. I think this is a YA horror that is about three sisters. I'm really enjoying all the female centered retelling bits. I watch Ashley's channel for Ashley but also for all these recommendations so I don't know what I'm going to read first but let's get started. I probably will start with the gothic and the bloody because it's still the spooky season. Okay I am obsessed with the books I'm reading now. I've started listening to one, I've started reading another one on my Kindle and I am completely obsessed. I slightly, for my mental health, hope that not all Ashley's recommendations are pure obsession because I don't know how I would survive that. First, let's talk about Babel, which is the book I started listening to. And Words cannot do with this book justice, which is highly ironic considering what the book is about. This book is everything I have longed for in a dark academia book. You know what? I should have listened to all of you. This book is awesome. And this is so my vibe as well because I didn't know it was Victorian. <laughs> in Babel we follow a boy who names himself Robin. He grew up in Canton. An English professor visits him and takes him to England when he is orphaned. And we know that there is some kind of silver translation magic. Which as someone who reads into languages it's already really really fascinating to me. Just the writing, such vibes, so atmospheric. I think the historical setting is beautifully set up, even though it feels like Oxford Victorian, which does not feel that new to me. The perspective of how we are getting this story is very fresh and very new. So I'm enjoying this a lot and the audiobook is also just a warm hug. Love the narration. I don't know, I think I'm a few chapters in. I'm not entirely sure, I'm just having a wonderful, wonderful time. And the other obsession that I'm currently having is Slew Food by Brom. I have another one that I just feel the need to recommend every single time I can because this one, oh my god, this book, I cannot stop thinking about it. This is Slew Food, A Tale of Bewitchery by Brom. 
Now Brom just in any capacity writes the perfect sort of gothic book. I started reading this on my Kindle yesterday and I think I got a third of the way through which is quite a bit for me since it's like a 300 page book and this is set in 1666 I believe in New England. We follow a woman who married an American man and she was sent from England to the US because in the US they were looking for English brides and her father got like money for her so well, really effed up <laughs> and she has been there I think for two years now when we meet her and she lives in this Puritan society which is incredibly strict and incredibly misogynistic and we see her have all of this anger that I just feel so strongly for her <laughs> because her brother-in-law is he is the epiphany of why women experience female rage <laughs> and she does as well. I don't know how realistic it is but I did of course spend an hour on Google looking at peers and societies back then to see how it matches with the book and it seems to be pretty... I mean it seems to be dramatized of course because we're reading fiction but it seems to be pretty true to the time. I would not want to time travel to that time and she's having a difficult time but then we also get chapters from it's like the devil. It's something satanic and it's so fascinating. I am reading on my Kindle on my phone because I want to see the illustrations in full color but I do hope that like the Kindle edition does have all the illustrations because sometimes you don't get the illustrations just a few in your Kindle edition because they're so beautiful I'm kind of stressing that I'm missing stuff. I mean I do feel like I'm going to love it so maybe I'll put it on my wish list as a paperback to just have the illustrations. I'm not like overly impressed by the writing on a sentence level, which bothered me a little bit at the beginning, but I feel like this book really doesn't need it because it has such great characters, great story, great vibes. The writing, like overall, and the pacing and the structure is great. This could be a really, really good read for me, as will Babel. Like they have five star potential right now, and I'm having just the best of times. I will let you know when I finish something which I feel like Babel's a long book so that will take a while but Slewfoot I mean I could sit down and finish it even though it's so big because I am so incredibly invested and it already started to be a little bit gory. I, I mean I'm not a horror gory reader but I want it to happen in this book because I'm so angry at certain characters. I feel like they deserve their very own horror scene so I, I'm pretty sure Rom's not going to this point. <music> new food and it's been a few days because I really wanted to think about it but I think it's gonna be a five star because it just feels wrong to give it a four or 4.5 but it's not like a very strong five star but I don't know what else it would be yeah I might change my mind later on but for now it's a hesitant five star but slew food just got me again the obsession kind of lowered a little bit throughout the book i had some difficulty i wanted to say when it became supernatural when it became magical because i was enjoying the historical part so much that i kind of felt like oh no what's happening now i don't want to lose the vibe that i was so obsessed with and it kind of changed throughout the middle of the book and that slowed down my reading a little bit but 
I also had some days where I just wasn't in a reading mood and I was reading slew food. So maybe that was part of it as well. Maybe it was just kind of me. But this was so good. It has horror, but I thought horror would be way bigger and the historical, the atmospheric, the character development would be less. But that is really at the core of this novel and I love that so much. I really don't have a lot of words for it except that I'm really happy I read it for the vlog because I think if I had noticed it in a bookstore I don't know if I would have picked it up to be honest because I'm still kind of discovering that I do like horror and I, that I do like dark stuff. I thought I was a total wimp but I can kind of take it and I'm really loving discovering this about myself. I listen to a little bit more of Babel, but that is not something I'm going through fast. Things are happening in this book right now and Ashley said in her vlog that it kind of turns around the romanticization of academics and I hadn't seen that yet, but I think I'm gonna see it now. And it's interesting, I'm still very hooked with the character. I care a lot about what happens to the character. We are getting to know some side characters, but we're getting to know a lot of them at the same time. So I kind of need a minute to be attached to them as well. Seeing the length of the novel, I have great hopes. I read Yellow Face, I think two months back, by Arif Guang, same author, and I just really like their writing. So yeah, this is still a five-star prediction as well. And the next one I think I'm going to pick up is A Dowry of Blood. I now feel confident I can take whatever horror is coming to me. Hi, it's Saturday morning and I woke up in a romance mode, which once in a blue moon I have, I just want to read romance. Instead of reading A Dowry of Blood, I'm going to read Heart of the Fae and somehow I'm afraid this is going to be a slow read because sometimes romance can be a slow read when it's not contemporary romance. I feel like the only romance that I personally fly through is contemporary romance, so I'm slightly nervous. But we'll see how it goes. I have sprints in like three minutes that I spontaneously decided to do. So I'm gonna sit down and see how far I'm going to get in of Heart of the Fae. And I'll let you know if I like it. I know this is a beauty and a beast retelling. I hopefully goes well for me. Because I do like retellings of beauty and a beast. And like in general fairy tale retellings. So... Here we go. But the reason why this book got such a high rating from me is because this book reminded me why I love reading. At the time that I picked this up, I was not doing too great. And I remember just feeling so emotional because I flew through the latter half of this book because I just loved it so much. I couldn't wait to pick up my book again. To me, this is the biggest downside of a Kindle because I want this to be pretty and big, but at least it has a map. <laughs> Once again, while filming this vlog, I am obsessed. I'm only 20% of the way through. It's not at all a slow read. It's a great read. Love the writing. Fast paced, but takes time for atmosphere. It takes time for characters to be built. And I love the Beauty and the Beast hints, especially with the, the, like the house of the beast. I'm loving it so much. I've been having a bit of a headache, so I need to stop reading now. But oh my gosh having a great time. <laughs> I'm not gonna update you a whole lot because I'm still kind of recovering from a migraine. If you can say that I'm recovering and just not in the middle of a migraine. I am loving this book so much and honestly it's really helping to just have a book that I'm really enjoying while just chilling here in my office space. I'm 65% of the way through and it's just so well written. It's just so well paced. I feel like the plot is just perfectly slowly revealed but not in a way that you don't want to keep on reading. This is really one of those books that you really want to pick up all the time. It's so easy and comfortable to read. Like the romance hasn't really picked up yet. I mean Beauty and the Beast is a slow burn in its core which I think is why a lot of people love it and it's definitely happening here. There have been some some sexual attraction bits but I definitely haven't seen a lot of romance falling in love parts and I did see that this is the first in quite a long series so I think we may just get a little bit at the ending and we get more of a relationship in the later books is what I'm guessing and um, one thing that I think is always difficult with Beauty and the Beast retellings and it's also a bit difficult with this one is the whole disfigurement element of it and how that 
often borders towards ableism and in an unhelpful way to look at this figurement. I think you can read this in different ways. It's not just one-sided offensive or anything like that. I feel if you have maybe a personal relationship with this figurement, then this can be maybe not the right read for you. I think Beauty and the Beast may not definitely not be your favorite story. I do think that there are a few bits where it's really described how the disfigurement of our, main, our male main character who has instead of that he looks like a beast like the Disney kind of beast he has wounds that instead of just scar tissue he has stones coming out of his skin and together with the elven characters who look quite inhuman and look like different animals I think the way sometimes it's described it's not maybe the best but it's also also not something that would bother me instantly. I think it also kind of matters if we get the whole transformation Beauty and the Beast thing because I always prefer it when that doesn't happen because I feel like that's a bit of an ableist message. So I would like it if our beast just stays the way he is and not that love makes him beautiful again. So we'll see how that goes but overall I think we're having another five star on our hands. The ending would have to be very disappointing for me not to give this five stars. This vlog is going so incredibly well so far, but I'm gonna have some tea and hopefully just finish the rest of this because I'm having a really wonderful time. I still look a little bit of a migraine mess, but I'm feeling a bit better now. And yesterday evening, I finished Heart of the Fae. It's not quite a five star. I think like 4.5, I really, really loved it. But I think towards the ending, maybe the writing wasn't a completely five star feeling although I had such a fun time with this one this was so much fun and it did end in a little bit of a cliffhanger so I kind of want to just read the second one instead of continuing with this vlog it wasn't one of those cliffhangers that are really annoying and that just feel like they need an extra page it did feel like the kind of cliffhanger where you can take a pause, you can appreciate what you've read, you can appreciate the first book, you can be really really excited for the second book. I feel like in whatever way the cliffhanger ends, it's gonna be a really fun second book. I'm not entirely sure how many books there are, but I think at least five what I've seen so far. I'm not sure if it's like with the same characters or if it's a general other world series because this series is called The Other World. I did see that Emma Hamm wrote a lot. I'm not sure how much I am appealed to her newer series because that seems to be like a demon very clean kind of thing and what I loved about this is that it's messy and that the people are not extremely beautiful which is always something in romance and fancy romance that kind of puts me off. I do like a flawed character in every aspect of the word. I think in the last clip I talked about disfigurement and how the representation was kind of used in that way and I do think that it's wrapped up in a positive way for me personally so I did really enjoy that. So this is gonna be a 4.5 and I do really need to think about it a little bit more. And then I also started A Dowry of Blood yesterday evening. And it I is a story that is incredibly strong on the gothic atmosphere. There's a lot of secrets, there are lots of very bloody bonds, very messy relationships that span the course of literal years and it is just an immaculate messy web of lives that are inescapably bound to each other. It's great. I love it. It's about 16% of the way through and this this is horror, you guys. <laughs> this is body horror in the sense that I've not experienced in a book before, I think. Not even in Dracula, which this is kind of an adaptation of. Not really, but kind of. So I did have some reactions while reading certain sentences. <laughs> I will not read them out loud here because I think they're too intense for YouTube if I'm gonna be completely honest but we follow Dracula's first bride so his first wife. Dracula is not uh, mentioned by name. We meet her at the site of a mass murder and Dracula feeds on her but decides to turn her into a vampire. So far I'm kind of following her early experiences of vampirism and of her attraction towards Dracula. I like the narration style because it is Constance telling us what has happened in a letter and I do kind of like those type of narration styles. I also like the pacing of the book. It's really working for me. It's very easy to read. I'm not enjoying the writing though. It's kind of not for me. It is too flowery which I, I can like but it's I think too flowery in a way that I feel like doesn't really work for the other elements of the book doesn't really match with me so this is not a five star prediction but I'm having a great time I feel like this is going to be somewhere between a three and a four but of course still very much to discover with this book and then I did decide to get a copy of Hollow Places I'm so confused because there's a title that 
is so similar to it. House of Hollow. The Hollow Place is another book. But House of Hollow. I decided to buy a paperback copy. That's not arrived yet. Because I am going really slowly with the audiobook of Babel. I'm just not in an audiobook mood, I guess. Because I'm too tired to really do anything that I can do while listening to an audiobook so I'm just having the best time with my Kindle but the Kindle edition and the paperback were basically the same price so I decided to go ahead and buy a copy of that one. I don't really have any new thoughts on Babel, it's definitely more academic than I thought it would be. It does really remind me of The Secret History but very much a 2023 version of it and I do think that looking at representation, looking at race is a bit more clever than The Secret History which is purely based on class inequality which I thought was really well done but it also doesn't criticize a whole lot beyond that and I think Babel is much more ambitious in that way and I'm comparing them because I feel like they have like 25 years in between of publication date but they are of course the ultimate dark academia books and I think if you love the secret history then Babel is something you're gonna really enjoy now as well. I'm a third way through only so I'm going really slowly with that one but it's still kind of a four stars prediction. I'm liking the translation discussions. It's a subject I sometimes think about and sometimes struggle with especially when I want to get something from the library because I wanted to get these books from the library but they didn't have any of these books and it's really catered towards people who read books in Dutch translations which makes sense because I live in the Netherlands but I feel like the culture right now is that everyone wants to read in English and when someone steps into a bookstore they go look for the English books those are people from my generation and Gen Z especially of course and I feel like the library is really of course behind I guess they don't have the funding of course to cater uh, in that way but I used to be like oh whatever it's the same you know I can read the Dutch translation or the original but now that I'm thinking more about it and that it's very easy for me to read books in English seeing the art of translation discussed in a book like Babel. I think it's something really beautiful when people learn to read in different languages and I feel like it's something we should encourage. I think there's a big cultural idea that now that the younger generation is reading in English a lot they lose their Dutch and I feel like that's a very limited idea of thinking about it because people who are bilingual are still really good at all their languages that they speak and read and write. Having people become fluent in different languages is something we should just encourage and celebrate. It's really fun to see that discussed in a book. Like Babel. But yeah, I'm excited to just nestle on the sofa and grab my Kindle, which I've never used as much as I'm using right now. But Kindle is live right now, so let's read. Ooh, it's erg donker. But I was thinking while well, I'll do my nails for anyone who's interested. This is, I think, one of my favorite colors. It's a pinkish purple color, but I thought we could talk about Babel because it's intriguing me in a good way. Not necessarily intriguing me in a way that I want to finish it really soon. It's not a super engaging read, but all the language discussions I find quite interesting as well. There was this discussion about if you use a certain language, what do you owe to the people who created that language, the people who developed that language. Also some academic ignorance. I feel like when it doesn't go well with the world and how riches are being divided. Something super niche I thought I could mention is my association with the word Babel because when I first saw the title it reminded me of the Dutch word or the, I don't know if it's like in its origin Dutch. I could look up while editing but I could also do it now. Okay so it is from Babel and the association I have with it is the word in Dutch called Babel which is the same spelling but with two b's in the middle. Uh, Bibble babble <laughs> which means to talk but not just to talk it's kind of to to chat to gossip. To me it is really funny that a book that's all about language, that is all about where words come from, that I have an association with it, with a word that means to talk. I think it's not necessarily a word that a lot of people use anymore. I mean, I use it, but like with my mom, um, let's have a little bubble or, but let, let's say bubblin. That's how you pronounce it, bubblin, which is just like to gossip and to have fun. But yeah, it's a very old word and I think like babel means something else, but yeah. I thought I'd share my association with the word Babel. I also still don't know exactly how I should pronounce it. Babel, Babel. I mean Babel makes more sense to me because it's very close to Babel. I'm sure that is all very interesting to know. I'm gonna let my base coat dry and listen to more of 
Babel. I'm just gonna say Babel because that's what everyone says and then you know what I'm talking about. I also almost, almost, I think I'm 65% like of the way through of A Dowry of Blood and I still have similar reactions, but I am really enjoying the way that their narration is woven together. I think it is quite a fun, weird, engaging experience. I know of myself that body horror is not really my thing and especially when it comes to the smut and the blood, I'm like, oh, let's skip that. Let's not. No, thank you. I'm not gonna judge the book on that because I know that's like a personal thing. The writing in a way that I'm not dwelling with it like 100% kind of reminds me of Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I think a lot of people really love, but for me the writing doesn't quite work. I think this is gonna be like a 3.5 star. It's to be expected when I have a whole vlog where I read six book that one isn't like almost a five star <laughs> so i'm gonna do the rest of my nails and i'll chat you once i finished i think a dowry of blood as a YA horror novel, which usually I don't typically go for because I feel like YA books can't go as dark as I would want them to be, which is fine. <laughs> That's just down to the age range. But this one really played with this folkloric mystery aspect really, really well. So it's two days later and I finished Diary of Blood when you saw me being a little bit creeped out <laughs> by what I was reading. I think it's pretty apparent that this is not my cup of tea and I knew that I'm not a vampire girly. So I knew that the more horror details may not be for me, but I did enjoy reading something that made me this uncomfortable. It was a really unique and actually kind of fun reading experience, but it's not for me. Like I appreciated it, but I'm not gonna read anything similar to this. I know that now. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it a 3.5 just because I did think it was a good book but it's just not for me. I know that it has like somehow a sequel that is a Carmilla retelling and that really sounds really cool but I'm just I'm not gonna do it. I think if you are a vampire girly this needs to be on your TBR. You're gonna love it. And then I started House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland which I got the very basic paperback edition and I'm now on page oh only on page 34. This is about Irish who is in high school it's a YA and she has two older sisters who don't live at home anymore and we know that something weird happened with them when their father either disappeared or died. We really don't have much details of it so far and when I do get details of course we'll not share it because it's for you to discover when you read this but there are like a few hints that it's supernatural that it's like magical realism. It doesn't feel like a fantasy. It very much feels like contemporary YA. The writing is like fine. I feel like my whole feeling about this book so far is that it's fine. It's nothing special but I'm also having a good time reading this so far. I don't know. I'm curious to discover how gory and gross this is going to be. I do believe that she said that it doesn't get as gory and hoary as an adult novel would get of course because it's YA which I feel like after reading A Dowry of Blood I can I can use a little bit of a break and I'm slightly happy that my last book in this vlog is just plain historical fiction because while I love the horror bits I also need a, 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 a tiny break. <laughs> yeah but I'm just gonna sit and read this today and see how far I get. I am not halfway through Babel. I, I don't have any new feelings about this although it, you know when you feel like okay this story could kind of get wrapped up now but you have half the book left so you know things are going to go down. That is the feeling I'm having right now and I'm, I'm slightly nervous, especially about the side characters. This vlog is taking me longer than I thought it would, which is absolutely 
fine. It does mean that I kind of want to finish all the reads that I still have today. Saying that, I just remember that I left one of the books upstairs. It's fine, it's fine. Yesterday, I sped read through Babel or sped listened. I think once I reached like the 60%, 70% point, things went down and I just wanted to keep on listening. I will need to think a little bit about Babel before I can like have a lot of words to say about it. I feel the same way as Ashley when she said that she had no words for it and I also don't really have a lot of words for it. It's gonna be a four star for me. I was really impressed by the ambition of this novel because it's, it is a bit of a typical dark academia novel but it does so much more than the genre usually does. And I think one of the things that people say about dark academia that they don't really like is that dark academia is really white and that was so well addressed in this book. I think the magical realism part I'm not really sure what to do with that. I couldn't explain it to you and I think it's not really well worked out but I also feel like it may have been a metaphor for things that happened in history and that very much has to do with Europeans, especially Western Europeans, using knowledge and language and art, I think, from countries that they would colonize, countries outside of Europe, without giving anything back. It's very much taking and greed and getting richer and building the empire. This is especially about Britain, but I think it would apply to a lot of Western European countries. I think that part was the thing I found most interesting. I also really liked the friendships in this book and I liked things that were and weren't done. I cannot say anything without spoilers, but I think some really good choices were made when it came to the friendships and it hurt. Oh, this book hurt at points. So I overall really liked this, but I think I also wanted some different things from it. And because of that, it's gonna be a four star, not a five star for me. I want more from certain characters. If you know me and if you've read this book, then I think you know who I'm talking about, who I wanted more from. We got a little bit from them at the ending, but I wanted way more. I'm glad I read it though, because I think it will leave a lasting impression on me and it definitely will make me think about the topics I just discussed, but also about authors maybe taking the easy route or us as storytellers taking the easy route when it is okay to be this crazy ambitious when making a piece of art when writing a book and then I've almost finished House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland this book definitely reminds me of some other books or some other things I have seen was it E. Lockhart I think who also wrote a YA kind of the characters remind me of that book I will leave a picture of it I read that years and years ago but it kind of has the same feel the writing feels quite similar but then I do get some Chilling Adventures of Sabrina vibes from the more horror bits. I really, really love that series. So that is all positive. Still, I'm not like overly impressed with this book. It feels like a low four star to me so far. I will have to say when we get to the more horror bits, it is original. I think the author made great use of the possibilities of horror and still keeping it YA. Really impressed by it because I feel like it's as dark as it can get for the genre. I have about 50 pages left of this one. So I'm now going to sit down with my tea and read this and then hopefully tonight I can read Wait because that's such a small book it has really a big printing so I hope I can finish that in an evening and then we can round out this vlog as I said it took me longer than I thought it would so I had to switch around my upload schedule a little bit I want to give all these books the time they deserve <music> It gets dark so early now. I'm going to have dinner in a bit, but first I wanted to let you know I finished House of Hollow. Things got dark, things got really, really dark and I appreciated it. I thought this could have gone a lot of ways, but the author went just the crazy route, I think. She just like did the thing authors don't usually want to do. That was really cool about this book. What I expected going into this is kind of what happened and that is that it's not really my thing. The mystery for me was dragged out a little bit too much. I didn't love the YA writing, but that is all me stuff. I think I would have absolutely loved it when I was in my teens. I would have gobbled this up. This would have been one of my favorite books, definitely. I just am not always able to go back to that place, if you know what I mean. But 
This kind of feels like it could have a sequel, but I really don't think it is. This is standalone, right? Oh wait, is the sequel already out? The Invocations, or is that just another standalone? Wait, I wanna know now. No, it doesn't seem to be a sequel because it doesn't have the little one behind it. The Invocations, which is right here. I think it just came out. Oh, it's not out yet. It will come out in January, but it sounds quite similar to this. I think if you like, a horror thriller that has some nature life versus death kind of elements and if you like YA within that genre then I predict you will enjoy this definitely I can see why I actually enjoyed it so much it's gonna be 3.5 definitely not 3 or lower because I did have a good time with most of this it is now let's see it's almost six o'clock I'm going to have dinner and then I'm going to read, wait, as much of it as I can. The combination of already loving her writing and then also loving the topic because Greek mythology just was a winning streak for me. I love this so much. I was still apprehensive going into it because we started with physics. <laughs> the first chapter is just pure physics and I was like, what? what? Wasn't here for the science, I was here for the mythology. Hi, good morning. I didn't finish <laughs> Wait in one evening, but I did finish it yesterday, so it took me a day longer than I thought it would. But I, of course, really like this. And I'm saying of course, because I kind of always really enjoy myth retellings. Although this really reminded me of a book I have somewhere else. This really reminded me of one of my favorite books, which is Autobiography of Red by Anne Carson. It has the same kind of setup where you have a Greek myth retelling combined with a more contemporary non-fiction kind of feel and that genre bending as well. I will say that I prefer the more challenging writing in this one because even though it was really, I think, easy to read and it had some beautiful quotes, I did sometimes feel that the writing was maybe bordering on the pretentious <laughs> a little bit, but maybe that was just my vibe and while I was reading it. I did underline some beautiful quotes, but I think I talked about this book as if it were about the daughters of Atlas, but it is about Atlas himself and also about Hercules and the way Hercules is portrayed in his book, I just love because usually he is portrayed as this very likable hero, but in his book, he is the biggest asshole you can imagine. I really like how the author used dialogue to portray that because in his dialogue Hercules became incredibly British in a not so great way. I really liked how this is definitely a Greek myth retelling but then it's also very British in some parts and how that is mostly connected to Hercules and not to the other characters. The voice of the author you have in the beginning and the end and it's very meta in that way as she literally writes about her own relationship with Atlas and while I appreciated that I don't know if I loved it. I'm being a little bit nitpicky with this book because with literary fiction I usually am way more nitpicky than I am with other genres because there's just so much layers and so much to think and discover but overall I am quite convinced that I will love Jeanette Winterson in other writing as well. I really loved again the portrayal of the different characters. There is some really weird stuff in here that I don't even want to discuss on the channel but just really weird <laughs> and I kind of appreciated that. Janet Winterson was like you know what if I make an unlikable character I'm going to make an unlikable character. So when she talked about the concept of the earth that uh, Atlas is carrying because of course you have Atlas who carries the world on his shoulders. She also really talked about the science the more contemporary science around it and we get some space stuff as well which I did not expect and I love that Jeanette Winterson was so able to get these different elements and connect them to our globe. So there are a few like thinkers I would say. Every man assumes that what is valuable to himself must be converted by others. The beauty of the tree is in its living nature. Those statements that just make you think a little bit. And when we were talking about Atlas this really comes back in a non-fiction part at the end. My name is Atlas, it means the long suffering one. Is it a failure for morning to become afternoon or afternoon to turn into peaceful evening and star bright night? That is one of my favorite quotes because it's the most beautiful. <laughs> I would definitely recommend if you like literary fiction, if you like things to be a little bit weird, I think you'll love this. So that is the end of this vlog. I think overall I didn't have like a bad time with any of these books. I didn't actively dislike any of them. I think I had a hard time with Dowry of Blood, but still it was really fun to read. I think maybe my least favorite was House of Hollow, which I predicted. Maybe I shouldn't have added that to this vlog, I don't know. Favorite I think was Heart of the Fae because I was just living for the writing and the romance in that one. But Babel really made me 
me think and has really stayed with me. I definitely want to read more by Brom because I really enjoyed Slew Food. That was such an obsessive, insane reading experience. So overall, I'm really glad I did this vlog because I have sequels and authors that are like going on my radar and that I want to read more from. So I'm really, really glad that I did this. I will have to say if Ashley says this is a favorite book, then I really trust her now. I trusted her before, but now I just know there's such a big chance. I will love it as well. Oh, thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope you had a fun time. If you did, then let me know in a comment down below. Um, I hope you have a lovely, lovely evening and I hope to see you in another video. Doei!